Welcome to Carb Cycling 101. In this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to carb cycle. Let's go. Hey, what is up? Jim Schultz here for Fcubed and livefcubed.com. And man, inside of the cube here, we hit fitness, finance, and faith. So if any of those appeal to you, please consider subscribing, even if only subconsciously. All right, man, straight up. First step in carb cycling, you gotta get a bunch of hair wax. Just kidding. That's actually the first step to life. Okay, but for real, man, stick with me for these next few minutes because the results, the carb cycling results, they can be super dramatic, man, especially if you are carb cycling for fat loss. Just like my man Justin, who working with me, he followed the exact outline that we're gonna go through and he went from 254 down to 207. Dude lost almost 50 pounds. So hey, as we get rolling, man, if you've tried carb cycling before, man, let me know. Drop me a yes down in the comments. If this is brand new to you and you've never tried carb cycling before, then hit me with a no. I wanna know where you guys are coming from. Okay, so let's dive right in. And along the way, I'm gonna drop the biggest benefit to carb cycling over any other nutritional strategy. Okay, so here's the basic idea. It's actually really, really simple. You're just gonna have high, medium, and low days, and you're gonna rotate through those guys throughout the week where the high, medium, low are the descriptors that point towards your carbohydrate intake and thus your total calories. Now, typically, you're gonna wanna leave those protein and fats, those other two macros, leave those guys fixed and just toggle with that carb variable. Now, there are at least a couple of different ways that you could set this guy up. So let's kind of unpack a couple of the most popular ones. Method number one, you have an equal number of high, medium, and low days. So you just constantly rinse and repeat that cycle. So maybe a typical week looks like this. Monday is a high day. Tuesday is a medium day. Wednesday is a low day. Thursday is a high day. Friday is a medium day. Saturday is a low day. And then Sunday, you've got kind of that seventh day, that flex day. That's another medium day, assuming that all of your previous days were on point and in line. As long as your medium days are set below your daily maintenance calories, then this is gonna work out swimmingly because your weekly averages are going to be below those daily maintenance calories. So you are going to be in a caloric deficit and that, that, that is the key. Straight up, man. It's even more important than hair Okay, so what about method number two? It's a little bit different and some people prefer this method where you kind of grind for five straight days where those days are all pretty low and then you have two kind of back-to-back -back higher days. Now those low days don't necessarily need to be like bottom of the barrel, like I'm gonna die type low, but they've gotta be pretty down there. But then of course you get to enjoy two glorious days back to back where the carb circus rolls into town. You definitely wanna be careful with this one though, man, cause you're kind of playing with fire. When you keep bouncing between really high days and really low days, before you know it, you've trained yourself kind of into this starve, binge cycle. And the next thing you know, you have a really, really bad relationship with food. And that is not good. Also, while you're carb cycling, you wanna be mindful of your training throughout the week. You know, you wanna to try to avoid situations where you're placing low days on your hardest training sessions of the week, i.e. legs, because you're gonna need the energy, you're gonna need those carbohydrates to power through those training sessions. So be mindful of how your high, medium, low days kind of pair up with your training throughout the week. Now, if you're digging carb cycling as a nutritional strategy so far, then hey, do yourself a favor and head down to the description because there's some more free resources, specifically the fat loss formula, which will give you three variables that you can start using right now to obliterate your love handles. All right, baby, you know what time it is. Q&A time. Question number one. All right, Jim. So how low should my low days be? Well, that's gonna vary a lot from person to person, but here's a good gauge. Somewhere between barely alive and semi-injured. That's gonna be your sweet spot. Question number two. So what kind of method man are you, brother? You a method number one guy? Or are you a method number two guy? Well, across my career, I can honestly say I've used both. 
I probably spent more time in method number one, and I actually think most people would benefit most from method number one, but I've kind of grown into method number two, where I kind of grind for four or five days in a row, and then the calorie circus comes to town. And lastly, question number three. So Jim, what is the biggest benefit of carb cycling? By far and away, it's this. It is the most flexible, the most, you know, fitting into our everyday lives. We all have parties and functions and, you know, days where we would just prefer not to be dieting all the time. And we'd like to, you know, socialize with other humans. And carb cycling not only allows you to do that with those high days, but you're basically encouraged to do that. All right, be sure to hit me with that trilogy, man. Like, share, and subscribe. That's Carb Cycling 2019. And we don't even need a carb cycling meal plan. It's just really all about the macros. Hey, speaking of which, carb cycling macros, how exactly do you set up your macros when you're carb cycling? Well, since you asked, 